verb, to banish or expel from one's native land. Exile is also a place, many miles of caves and tunnels far below the world's surface. The Empire rules the surface totally. When they discovered exile, they had the perfect use for it. A prison. Everyone who didn't fit in. The rebels. The antisocial. The disliked. They were teleported to exile. Forever. The exiles were not inactive. They built subterranean cities. They learned to fight. They studied magic. They built their strength. And when they were ready, they got their revenge. The Archmage Erika made her own teleporter. Emperor Hawthorne ruled the Empire. He was brilliant and ruthless and hated totally. What? Oh, hell. Tacos? Yes? It is time to deal with exile. Yes, Garzad. Exile struck down the Emperor. Four years later. The Empire invaded. Exile was outgunned and outnumbered. The Empire War was thought lost. Until Exile found an ally. The alien Vanatai joined you. And turned the tide. The Empire was expelled. Exile won the Empire War. Five years passed. Nothing was heard from the Empire. The exiles decided that it was time to return to the surface. They built a teleporter and formed Upper Exile, a new series of caves just below the surface. They then selected someone to explore the surface for the first time. You. Your testing was extensive. And very painful. Your briefing was considerable. This is a tree! What's it for? And confusing. You were sent up to Fort Emergence in Upper Exile. You are to go see someone named Anaximander to get your orders, and then go up to the surface. All Exile waits on you. All wait to see what you'll find. They want to return to the surface. You carry the dreams of your people. Good luck. Hello, friends and adventurers, and welcome to the long-awaited Sally Cat Plays Exile 3 Ruined World. This is the third game in the Exile series by Jeff Vogel, and probably the best known out of the original three. I'm not entirely sure why, maybe it got better distribution on Windows this time? Anyway, it's a lot of people's favorite. Exile 3 features yet more improvements and extras from the first two, most notably a complete graphics overhaul. Now we get to enjoy more animations and neon blue cave floors. But first, we gotta make a new party. Party creation screen is very similar to the previous game. Ah, and instant help is activated. This is pretty helpful for someone who's never played this game or any of the others before, 
I will be turning it off at the first opportunity. And we get a pre-made party that is basically identical to the pre-made party of Exile 2. And I will consign all of these characters to the Eternal Void. Yes, I do know what I'm doing. There. Now a blank canvas for me to do whatever I want. As long as it's a human, Nephilim or Slith. Let me see here. So, normally I start my party with a sword or a similar warrior character, but every party does need a healer. Let's give them some extra skill in defense. Maybe I'll branch out and uh, see if thrown missiles still have the defense bug on them. Little luck, why not? And of course I've got to give them some, some strength and intelligence. Would be helpful. And from our fabulous character graphics, this guy looks pretty cool. I'll call him Steven. Okay. Now I'll skip the part where I make the rest of the party. I don't want to make you guys sit through too much of that. Okay, so we are in the guest quarters of Fort Emergence, and the main interface screen looks a little bit different this time around. The left side, with the main game window and the action buttons, is the same, but on the right side, we've got a smaller party stats screen, a separate window for inventories, and then the usual action log. Also, I noticed something while running through inventory a little earlier. Steven gets a scroll of flame, for reasons I don't quite understand. Amethyst, being a Nephilim, starts out with a cavewood bow and arrows instead of a knife. And Garnet gets throwing knives for some reason, despite no one having thrown weapon skill and Steven being the one with defense. Right then. There's also a button for special items. I have a map of Krizan province and a map of Upper Exile. And a button for jobs, which I currently have none. If I had a slith in the party, they would start out with a spear. Now looking over here, I can see a few things lying out. Really need to turn that instant help off. We have a piece of paper, a shirt, and a candle. Here, Steven, put a shirt on. Also, let me go to preferences and never show instant help. I do not need it. Much less annoying. A piece of paper. Map. A note at the bottom reads, come see me as soon as possible. Also, stuff inside storeroom is for you. Help yourself. An Aximander. So we've got you, to surface, my office, Side storeroom supplies for you here, and two caves. This is not a complete map of Fort Emergence. There's another magical research area over in this corner. But it does the job of pointing us towards an Aximander. Ooh, pants and food in here. <laughs> and some gold in this one. Sometimes looking in dressers pays off. Several comfortable beds have been made up so that you can rest here as necessary. It's a nice gesture. Very few people on the surface will be so polite. 
but we just got here. We don't need to rest. Crude sign put up very recently. Surface Exploration Crew Quarters. You step out of your quarters and into one of the many cavernous halls of Fort Emergence. The corridors are eerily quiet. Only a small fraction of the troops that will be stationed here have arrived yet. Time to go get your orders. But first, we explore. Even more pants. Somewhat fancier guest quarters. With a shirt and robes. Garnet was my mage, so she should probably get the robes. Yeah, I don't think the previous two exiles had an inventory slot for pants. Well, we do now. Ooh, training hall. I will use this eventually, not today. Yanmitho. A young, lithe woman with dark skin moves lithely about the room, performing various martial exercises. A vicious-looking curved sword is sheathed at her side. This person is clearly capable of being quite lethal. Exile 3 also introduces a uh, more click-based conversation system. She walks over and gives you a stiff, sharp, not entirely respectful bow. I am Yanmitho, the trainer for Fort Emergence. She looks at you with distaste. I am here to train soldiers to the best of my ability. I can also train... others. She says others with great disdain. You can't help but guess her contempt is aimed at you. You work for unspecified services, do you not? I am not afraid to say I have little respect for your lot. Unspecified services. Fah! She spits. A ragtag band of untrained adventurers, amateur spies, and mixed hangers-on. We soldiers train hard and die for our cause. You wander around aimlessly and expect respect. And yet, King Micah gives the first contact with the surface to your undisciplined lot. She spits again. It is not to such as me to question the wisdom of my monarch. She pauses and thinks. Even if he is wrong. So yes, we can talk to Yanmitho for training once I get some skill points. Guest Dining Hall. Gordon. You meet a young, scrawny man with short, sandy brown hair. He bows respectfully to you as you approach. Greetings, adventurers. I am Gordon. Well, I'm sort of the servant for the guest quarters. I sort of keep everything clean, prepare meals, that sort of thing. Well, when important guests such as yourselves come, they expect to be treated well, and with as much luxury as we can summon, and that sort of thing. Unfortunately, there's one problem. Well, we're trying to get the fort ready for all the troops that will eventually be here. Unfortunately, we're not totally ready yet. He looks scared. Please don't try to get me in trouble. It's not my fault if anything goes wrong. I just sweep. He grabs a broom and sweeps a little, by way of demonstration. He looks nervous. Um, there's a bit of a problem with that. The fort is sort of not entirely ready, and I didn't- and I don't have the supplies up here to cook yet. Perhaps if you went to see Elisa? She runs the main kitchen in the southwest corner. She gives lots of food to anyone who asks. Good to know. Can pull up my map here, but... When I've got the game full screened like this, it's a little obnoxious to keep the map and the main screen up at the same time. Not that bad, really.
These barracks are still clean, pristine, and new. Clearly, no soldiers have been moved in to fill them yet, but it probably won't be that way for long. Uh, there's a little extra space on the map, but it's not big enough to actually be anything. Also, look, when I walk on top of the beds, there's now a graphic for someone in the bed. Hee <laughs> hee! What's this? Is that a kitty? You see a cat! And this is not Garnet, this is a sound file in the game doing the meows. You encounter a cat. It looks up at you with the arrogance and disinterest its kind is known for. It stretches its back and bats at a bit of dust. Meow? It looks up at you in confusion. Meow? Oh, I can pet the cat! It purrs. Good kitty. Uh, barracks are still clean, pristine, and new. That probably means there's nothing in the dressers. Yeah, there's nothing in the dressers. Let's tunnel to elsewhere. Okay. Yes, in Exile 3, the tunnel... Fl in Exile 3, the cave floors are bright neon blue. Because why not? Magician's offices. This isn't really where we're supposed to be yet, but I like exploring. This woman is quite young, probably in her mid-twenties. Yet she radiates power well beyond her years. She levels a piercing gaze at you. I am Mazumdar, head mage of Fort Emergence. I coordinate all magical activities that take place in Fort Emergence. You mentioned the name of the fort twice, it might be important. This fort is still painfully understaffed. However, if we have our way, it will soon be a great center of magical power. She grimaces. That is, if the triad allows it. This fort will eventually be used for experimentation. This fort will eventually be used for experimentation, training, and launching magical spells against our foes. However, the triad keeps us from being nearly as powerful as we could be. The Triad consists of the three greatest mages of exile. They are in charge of all things magical. Unfortunately, they tend to not want to let power out of their control. For that reason, our resources are nowhere near what they could be. She grins. With exceptions. We are supposed to be training mages here, yet the Triad won't let us have the books to teach spells from. She grins mischievously. However, we've managed to sneak a few things past them. We need those tomes, after all. Mazumdar thinks, and then slowly shakes her head. I'm sorry, but it is too much of a risk to say more. If certain things were known, it would cause us great trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's all I can get from Mazumdar for now. This room is magically kept hot and humid, and is filled with a refreshing plant smell. To the north is a wide variety of flora, neatly organized and ready for careful study by the fort mages. Ooh. You step on the rune, and something remarkable happens. The plants to the north are now surrounded with bright auras. Looking closely at them, you feel you can sense things about their health and uses. You step off the rune, and the effect fades. Ooh, very nice. Also, surface plants! This is a tree! This is also a tree, but it's a cave tree. Very different. Also in this game, there are books that I can pick up and read. Surface Flora and Fauna by Eva of the Tower of Magi. Many are the wonders of nature available on the surface of the world. Our long exile has made us forget the beauty that is our birthright. But little by little, we begin to remember. Although the Empire did its best to cleanse the surface of anything wild or dangerous, and were, as far as we know, successful, many bizarre and fascinating creatures, such as 
birds and clams and bushes still exist and thrive. I'll put that back. So I don't see Eva in here, but I did see this guy. Hem, I said I did see this guy. You meet a small, bent wizard, heavy with years. He is poring over a thick book, researching esoteric fields you could never begin to comprehend. He looks up at you. It is clear his mind is wandering in realms far away. He croaks. I am Bera. I mainly concern myself with doing research. If only the facilities here were adequate. He croaks in irritation. Now, if I was at the Tower of Magi, I would have all the tomes and materials I need. But here, I have little to work with. The Tower of Magi, the center of magical learning in exile. Oh, what I would give to be there! The research I could perform! Devising immensely powerful spells, communicating with beings beyond your comprehension, gaining absolute power. Nothing you could possibly understand. You're probably just here to waste my time. I mean, kinda. <laughs> he croaks angrily at you. I am supposed to fritter away my time analyzing any evidence you may provide to determine who is responsible for the devastation on the surface. So if you have evidence, give it to me. Or go away. Uh, devastation on the surface? Have we learned about that yet? Sequence break. Kind of. Yeah. There's a uh, stuff going on on the surface. These are runes of confining, designed to hold all manner of dangerous creatures. When you step onto one, every hair on your body stands on end. It's not a comfortable feeling. This chamber is thick with the raw stink of animal feed and fresh dung. There are cells ringing the room several of which hold strange creatures from the surface world. They must be here for study. Strange creatures like a chicken. <laughs> a chicken pecks and scratches the ground in front of you. Scratch, peck, peck, scratch, scratch. It pecks the ground further. After a little while, it finds a seed. It eats it, and resumes pecking. What can I tell you? It's a chicken. So, hello. Eva! This young mage's robes were probably clean this morning. Now they have bits of fur and tiny clumps of dung on them. She curtsies, self-consciously brushing fur and such off her robe as she does so. I'm Eva. I'm here to research the flora and fauna of the surface world. We magically summon samples from the surface world, examine them in their cells, and teleport them back up. It's a difficult technique, but remember, we need to stay hidden from the Empire as long as possible. Flora. You know, plants. If there's anything you found of interest, ask me about it. Maybe I'll know something. And what of fauna? You know, animals. If there's anything you found of interest, ask me about it. Maybe I'll know something. I found a cat earlier, but, uh... <laughs> cat? Never heard of it. Sure, Eva. Sure. I guess I could ask about the animals in the cells. What, really? Huh, okay. I don't know what, if anything, I can actually ask Eva about here. Is that a sheep? It's a sheep! You approach the sheep. It looks at you. You look at it. The air is thick with tension. It doesn't respond. Sheep are notoriously stupid animals. Ah, it says. Ah, ah. 
And I don't think I can talk to you. Because you are hostile. You are a wolf. There is a stout wooden lever protruding from the ground here. Pull it. Tempting, but no. That lever will open the cells and let all the critters out. There's something here. The corridor here is blocked by some sort of a magical barrier. It's thin as a bubble, and seems just as insubstantial. However, you know very well how misleading appearances can be when dealing with magical matters. You touch the barrier lightly. It throws your hand back with daunting force. Your wrist is slightly sprained. You back away quickly before something worse happens. But hey, it did no actual damage. I think there might be one or two tomes that Ms. Umdar mentioned back there. We'll get to see more about that eventually. And I've just been joined by my own cat, Garnet. By the way, Garnet the cat is in fact named after Garnet the character from Steven Universe, which is the theme I'm going with for my characters in this game. Offices of the Majory. Violators will be towed. Ribbit. And big courtyard. With soldiers. Uh, the guard doesn't respond. Okay. I'm going to put the map away because I don't need it that much here. I do know this beginning area of the game pretty well. So the guards don't respond. We don't get generic guard conversations. That's disappointing. But this guy looks different. That's because this guy is a girl. Ilona. A short, middle-aged woman with heavy chain armor watches the front gate. She keeps a short but wicked-looking spear close at hand. She looks from the gate over to you. I am Ilona. Her voice has a heavy accent you can't quite place. I am watching the front gate. Not a risky job, is this true, but the one that needs to be getting doing. Her speech is very strange. It is not like the north gate. That is the way to the outdoors, and much more heavily guarded. If the Empire finds us, the north gate is where it will, how you say, hit the fan. She looks embarrassed that you mentioned the accent. I am from a long ways away. My apologies. Aw, oh, you don't need to apologize for that. That person is not a soldier. You meet a young woman with long dark hair. She doesn't seem to be too interested in talking to you. Teresa. I'm with unspecified services, like you. The Department of Spies, Lone Wolf Mages, Adventurers, and everyone else working for Exile that isn't in the army. Also, the source of eternal resentment on the part of the military. We both are on assignment for unspecified services at the moment. Your job is to do recon on the surface. I am the contact for the others being sent up there. Wait, others? Yes, others. You didn't think something so important would be left to just you, huh? She pauses. And more than that, I'm not cleared to say. Sorry. She turns away. Mm hmm. And here I thought we were special. This building is a primary barracks. Please wipe feet of all mold before entering. These barracks are still clean, pristine, and new. These barracks are not quite so clean, pristine, and new. They've got some people in them. Who are not responding. Sometimes I have to be pretty precise with actually hitting the sprite of the person I'm trying to talk to. You meet a gaunt, severe man. His armor bears the insignia of a commander. He has a regal bearing, but cruel eyes. He looks at you coldly. I am Commander Johnson. 
I wonder if this is the same Commander Johnson from, uh, was it Fort Below or Fort Dovno? I think it was Fort Dovno. I command all soldiers in this fortress. Yes, I command soldiers, which you aren't. Someday, we're going to have to slay all those Empire bastards. And when they do, it'll be the soldiers who do the work. Yes, that's right. Slay all of them. And you and your other unspecified services, Wastes of Air, will be no good to anybody. It's your turn now, but someday, it'll be up to the men, not the kids. So go away. He looks away. Mm -hmm. Real charming guy, that Johnson. These barracks are still empty. Very large dining hall. Can I talk to you? I cannot. This is actually a pretty large map. You meet a small, heavy-set woman with a friendly attitude and radiant smile. She wears long, well-cared-for robes. She shakes your hands. I'm Marion. Hi there. Well, let's see. I was doing research in Motrax's cave, but everything up here seemed more important. So I came to Fort Emergence to help out. It's Marion from the cave of Motrax. She grows sad. Yes, poor old Motrax. There were five dragons in exile, and Motrax was the oldest and kindest. In the Empire War, a band of those bastards tried to slay him. The wounds he received killed him after a long illness. Aww. After that, the place had too many sad memories for us. I mean me and the captain over there. Captain Ko. He's somewhere around here. He's a, shall we say, rather good friend of mine. She grins. It takes a lot of time and work to bring people up from the underworld, and it's frightening being so close to the Empire. That's why we're so short-handed now. And why it's so important to have volunteers come. Emergency water storage. No swimming, no spitting. This means you. Well, that's not much of a problem. We still cannot swim. You meet a captain of the Exile Army. He's very thin, somewhat hyper, and undeniably friendly. I'm Ko! Um, Captain Ko. Oh, just Ko. Greetings! He shakes your hands vigorously. Well, not much in the way of fighting. I just help Marion with the supplies. There may be fighting someday, but we're hoping to avoid it for a while. There are nowhere near enough troops here to have a chance against the Empire. Yep. It takes a lot to feed an army, after all. By the way, you the lot that's going up to the surface? If so, the stuff in the side supply room is for you. Help yourselves. It's also there for your storage use. If you have too much stuff, leave the excess in the side storeroom. We'll watch it to make sure nothing happens to it. Convenient, that. <laughs> we came up here together. We're sort of inseparable, you know. He grins happily and rocks on the balls of his feet. Aw. Locked door, how dare. Auxiliary supply room. There is a small storeroom here, off the side of the main storeroom. You find a note on the door. Please reserve items inside for a surface exploration team. You would guess this means you. Ooh, free loot! And I'm not too worried about everything being unidentified here, because this is a pretty safe area. 
nothing that we pick up here is going to be cursed. About that locked door. I don't have any lockpicks yet. Hmm. Okay, fine. Stay locked. I don't have that many spell points right now. Can I take these? I could, but it would be considered stealing, so I think I shall not. Also, the graphic for this axe reminds me of, uh, the axe from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. The Black Rangers weapon. I talk to you. Oh, that's Gordon again. He got out. Got to make sure that I have explored every bit I can. Lizard. Can I talk to the lizard? I can. A small lizard looks up at you with beady eyes. Yes. Yes, yes. The lizard looks up at you as if deciding whether you're food or not. Okay, so pretty typical lizard. You look interesting. You meet a portly bearded man in nondescript robes. He looks bored. Oh, hello. I'm Habaker. Can I help you? Well, I was hired to do research for the fort, which is why I'm so bored. Yes, I'm a sage by trade. I was brought here to gather and study samples from the surface world. That's why being here is so boring. If only I could find someone interested in my abilities. He looks at you meaningfully. All the things to explore. All the amazing creatures we've forgotten about and need to rediscover. I hear they have a thing called a bird. Can you imagine? Whoa, man. It flies, or breathes fire, or something. We'll never know for sure, until I can get to the surface. Ah, so you're bored because you're still stuck in here and uh, can't be allowed out uh, onto the surface just yet. I came here to study things from the surface world. However, they won't let me up there to study. So I spend my time down here, wandering back and forth. Well, I am a sage, and I've done some work in the study of items. If you need something identified, I can do it cheap. At last, he exclaims, something useful to do. He looks over your items very carefully. Yes, I can identify them, for only ten gold each. Item identification does look a little bit different here. Ooh, iron arrow is not bad. This is cheap identification, but I also don't necessarily want to spend all my gold on it right up front. Though... So Starting the game off with 200-something gold is pretty good. Chief Administrative Offices. That sounds like something I can save for last. Orb of Thralny. Authorized personnel only. Ooh. The door is locked. I might not be authorized just yet. Office for exceptional supplies. Please, no begging. A pale exile, impeccably dressed and hair neatly cut, waits behind the counter. As you approach, he checks his notes. I am Levy. How may I help you? I am in charge of making allowances for those in exile's employ. I also provide rewards for those who perform exceptional services. He smiles. In addition, I have been given a very valuable stewardship. He gives a small, smug smile. I am entrusted with the guardianship of Thralny's sphere. An irreplaceable and ancient artifact. It gives its possessor the power of flight. He flashes you another small, tight smile. 
if you ever need to borrow it, be sure to give me a request. He smiles smugly. Request denied. Perhaps if you try again later. You resist the urge to punch him. Ah, turns out we can get an allowance in this game. Levy checks some records, counts out a small pile of gold coins, and hands them to you. You have been budgeted a 25 gold per diem. Here is your allowance for today. Don't spend it all in one temple. Sure. That reminds me, I didn't actually find uh, Elisa, the woman in the kitchens. Kitchens are somewhere in this big mess of a building. Ah, here they are. Piles of ice keep this room nice and chilly. Sides of giant lizard and sacks of fresh-picked mushrooms are heaped around the room, ready to feed hungry soldiers. Must be the pantry. I like the little frozen lake graphic here. Or frozen pond. An old, small, very round woman stirs a pot of savory lizard stew. She is surrounded with enough kitchen implements and supplies to feed an army, which is, you suppose, her job. Welcome, children. I am Elise. I provide hot meals to all my children. I also, if asked very nicely, provide rations for troopers going out on trips. Once I had children of my own, but they grew up and left. After that, I had the skills to cook for a horde, but no horde to cook for. Now I cook for a somewhat older horde. Exile troops eat a lot, but not much more than my nine kids did. She chuckles at that. She seems like she's about to tell you a story about her family, and then thinks better of it. Aww. Elisa smiles maternally. Oh, you poor dears. You need some lunches? Just a moment. She sets to work, and soon comes back with several neatly wrapped bundles of rations. Here you are. Now be careful out there. So Elisa and Levy, I think, are programmed to give you food and gold, respectively, once a day because there is a day system in Exile 3 that measures the passage of time. That will become re more relevant eventually. These chambers are a lot nicer and more carefully built than the other areas you've seen. This is probably where the high-ranking officials and other big mucky mucks will hang out. Someday, this room will be the office of some high-up exile bureaucrat. Right now, it's being used to store office supplies. Same message. Same message. You are not an office supply. You meet a burly man with a lot of hair and a lot of gut. He looks you up and down as you approach. I'm Flanagan, with unspecified services. Pleased to meet you. I'm sort of an investigating agent. Well, I'm too big and loud to be much of a spy, so I wait here. Then, when something goes wrong or gets weird, I'll go look it over and figure out what's going wrong. He taps his head. I got more up here than you might think. I don't think there's anything else I can ask him about for now. The Tearing of the Bodice by E. Sternberg, Esquire Esmeralda ran through the bushes, barely ahead of her ravening pursuers, her chest heaving mightily to escape the pathetic remaining shreds of her leather armor. The bizarre, tentacled, squirreloid creature pursued close behind, panting and tingling. Soon, wild maiden, he cried, soon you will be mine. It continues in this vein for a long, long time. Aha. I don't think I needed to know what the bureaucrats get up to in their off hours. You pass through the door and find yourself in a small, dimly lit office. It is filled with stacks of papers, maps, 
plans, scraps covered with notes and the like. It also contains many plates and mugs, all in need of washing. In addition to all other clutter, you find a small, ratty man, clothes and hair in disarray, twitching with nervous energy. When you enter, he leaps up and rushes over to greet you. Greetings, my friends. I am so glad you're finally here. I am an Axamander. As Commander Johnson commands the military half of the fort, I run the somewhat, um, more covert operations. He speaks very, very fast. I will be the person you report to and get further instructions from during your explorations of the surface world. When you do something, come to me. When you don't do something, come to me. When you're just plain confused, come to me. He leaps back over to his seat and sorts through papers, looking for something. He can't find it. Damnation! I have somewhere a map of a nearby goblin outpost. There's a bandit lair, too, in the caves. We thought you might want to go there to learn to work as a team and pick up some loot before exploring the surface. There's a map to there around here somewhere. Search a bit. Then, when you're warmed up and ready to explore the surface, come back here. I'll have more instructions. He nods, flashes you a disturbingly broad grin, and goes back to his notes. An Examander looks up from his desk. Don't forget, the sooner you go out onto the surface and see what's going on, the better. All Exile waits to see whether it is safe to emerge or not. By the way, if you ever have excess items that need storage, leave them in the small storeroom where you found your supplies, or in your quarters to the northeast. I'll make sure nobody disturbs them. You greet an Examander, commander of spying and special forces for 40 merchants, and a very fidgety, nervous man. He nods. I am called an Examander. I have some titles and ranks as well, but prefer not to use them. It is my job to give you instructions in your explorations of the surface world. It is a great honor that has fallen to you to be given such a task. This fort is well concealed inside a hill. Simply exit out to the north and you will be outside. What you will find there, we still have little idea. This is your task, to look out and report back. And, if you merit it, be rewarded. There are many ways we can reward you for bravery, persistence, and courage. In particular, we will give you magical spells and items. Ooh. For the items, go to Levy. For the spells, you will need to go to the Portal Fortress to be sent back to exile. The Portal Keep is a fort containing the teleportal between here and exile. To get there, leave Fort Emergence to the south and follow the road. Signs will lead you there. At this point, we need to know what the Empire has been up to. Both we and our allies need to know. Soon, you should leave through the concealed hill entrance to the north. Explore and report back. Of course, you can spend some time building strength first. Yes, practice fighting and working as a team. Leave the fort to the south, and you'll be in the caves. To the northeast are layers of both goblins and bandits. Somewhere in these offices is a map there. Go practice fighting if you want. But don't tarry too long. All exile waits on you. Okay, then. We have our instructions. At least the first set of them. So. This is the North Gate, which you must pass to reach the world's surface. It is blocked by a lava pool with a narrow bridge over it, which can be collapsed in case of Empire attack. Northern Gate. Warning. Beyond here lies surface. Authorized personnel only. So we certainly can start exploring the surface right away. But I think it's a good idea to head out the other entrance and do a bit more exploring in Upper Exile first. Oh, that's Yanmitho again. So, Upper Exile, a brand new cave system for us to play in. Fort Emergence, authorized personnel only. Okay.
You stand on a large stone bridge, built to carry troops and supplies across the river to fort emergence. Soon an army will cross here, in hopes of carving out an area for the exiles on the surface of the world. To the north you see a huge, open cavern, dotted with recently built towns and settlements, populated with exiles recently teleported from far below. To the west is the Portal Keep, where everyone up here, including you, arrived. And it looks like... We've got a few goblins and brigands who are working together for some reason. Okay, at level one, I am not super effective yet. Okay, guys, come on, try not to die. Good enough! And it turns out I have to pick up all of the golden food manually in this one. And that, my friends, is our introduction to the world of Exile 3. Let's hope I do a little bit better in combat in the next episode. Have a good one, everybody.